Hi, welcome to Local Flavor. I'm Deborah Anderson and I'm here in Moreland, Kansas at Aunt Faye's Community Kitchen. And we are gonna make today some bacon jam, which everyone who's asked me what I'm making, I tell them bacon jam and they don't understand. So <laughs> it's gonna be sort of like, we're gonna put it in little tiny jelly jars or jam jars and it's a little bit salty and a little bit sweet but it's a good spread to put on a cracker or on a hamburger, or I've heard of people who put the jam inside their hamburger and then build the, build the patties with it already in it. But it has pun punches, packs a lot of flavor punch in a little bit of area. And you know, bacon is always a hit now. My friend Andrea actually told me about bacon jam. She had found some on vacation that was for sale at a restaurant or someplace they visited. And so I have been on a mission to try and figure out how to make it myself. Oh, this is a nice knife. This is, belongs here at Aunt Faye's. And there's as many ways to make bacon jam as there are people who like bacon jam. And so, I have tried many of them. The what I like about this one is that it uses the least amount of pans. <laughs> so, and I'm a person who likes to keep um, working with the stuff while I'm cooking, and so I like to stir stuff. This one requires a lot of attention. So there's some that you put it in like a crock pot for three hours, and then you can run it through the food processor to get it really to a jelly consistency. This one it will be a little chunkier and we're just going to do it all stovetop. So I'm going to do a pound and a half of bacon. Now I know, oh, these are a little bit bigger packages. The packages I used last time were only 12 ounces so it took two full packages. Uh, the one I have today is 16 ounces so I only need a package and a half. And I've got, oh my goodness, <laughs> one sacrifice already. I've got my pan heated up there. I'm just going to put them in as I cut it. But I'm going to cut them as small as I can. I'll chop it again later when they're all cooked. <laughs> when they're all cooked, I'll chop it again later. But like I said, this, this particular recipe is a little bit uh, hardier in terms of the size of the chunks. Now, this one also does not have any whiskey or coffee or maple syrup in it, but many recipes do. This one um, adds the flavor more from spices instead of liquids. I don't, we don't have any whiskey in the house. That one sounds like it would be pretty interesting, but I don't like to drink it, so we don't have it. I didn't want to buy it just for a half cup for a recipe. And we want to cook this very, very crisp. At first, what will come out is just liquid, and we want to render out all of this fat. So. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. I'll know it's getting close when I start seeing it foam up. Have you ever noticed when you're cooking bacon it makes like a foam? So that's when you know you're getting close. Oh, I hate to tell you this, that is a piece of the package. Well, for years I have been cutting through the package with a knife and now I see that maybe it's a bad idea. I'm going to put, um, like I said, a pound and a half of bacon and a pound and a half also of onion. That's another thing from recipe to recipe that varies quite a bit. I've seen it with up to four large onions. A pound and a half is about two large onions, give or take. I know it will fill up this bowl. So <laughs> the onions that were for sale around here this week were pretty small. So I know that that 
bowl holds about a pound and a half. So I'm going to put equal parts onion and bacon. Some of them just have one. Some of them have up to four. So if you, there's something in this recipe that you think is a little wanky, you can look online. This one, actually, I've tried so many. I took the parts I like from, from several different ones and made it kind of my own. So you won't find this exact one unless you look on the Next Tech website. Let's get this turned back up a little bit. It takes a while to render this down. So while it's rendering and cooking, I'm going to cut up my onions as fast as I can and just stir these now and then. More bacon for real or for real eating. Now, normally I would get a different uh, cutting board and knife. However, this is all going to be cooked together anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and put it together. And I'll pile them in here because that's how I'll know when I get to a pound and a half. But since the recipes vary so much from one to another, I wouldn't worry about weighing it or measuring it. And we don't need to worry about how small they are. I usually like to cut really small. This is going to cook for so long that it will basically fall apart. So. Don't be too hard on yourself on getting it super fine or uniform. And I will have a mess to clean up later. I am using the Dutch oven on this. Um, bacon for the reason that I only have to use one pan then because it will all fit in it and especially also because bacon fat splattering everywhere drives me crazy and the higher pan the higher sides on the pan give me a little bit of respite from that not a hundred percent These ones aren't too hot. Sometimes they're so hot you can barely stand to cut them. But I got lucky. This particular recipe has thyme in it, which I don't know what it is about thyme. You know, you put it usually in stuffing and things. It gives it almost a wild flavor to me. For some reason, as soon as I put the thyme in and taste it, I go, ah, oh, kind of makes me feel like I should be out hunting, even though I don't hunt. And it's not really it doesn't smell like deer or taste like deer, but it just makes me want to get outdoors. Ooh, this one's hotter. How are you doing? So if you look at this bacon now, you can see that it's mostly just the liquid coming out. I haven't got to foaming at all yet. This might take a while and maybe I will take a break here and when we come back I'll have the bacon done enough so we can move on to the rest of the recipe. Here in the Heartland we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, 
the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Hey, welcome back. While you were away, we finished cutting up the onions and we let this bacon render down and I wanted you to see how the foam looks. So when you get to the foamy part, that's when you know you're finally getting the fat out of it and it's almost done. We do need to still give it a few more seconds. I want it to all be to where the, it's pretty much uniform in color. You'll still be able to see where the fat is compared to the meat, but it will be fairly uniform. But I did want you to see how the foam is, is your best clue. That you can give it a lot more time if you're not to the foam yet. So once this is cooked down enough, I'm going to strain it and get most of the bacon fat out. Some recipes actually use all the bacon fat to cook the onions, but this one uses a little bit of butter and just two teaspoons of the bacon fat. And at the end, we add a tiny bit of olive oil, but that's because olive oil doesn't get, um, you know how bacon fat turns solid and butter turns kind of solid to where you can't see through it, so you lose the shine. So at the end, we'll put in a little olive oil just so it will keep a shine. How are you thinking this looks? I'm pretty happy with it. Now you can keep the rest of the bacon fat that comes out for another project or throw it away. There's a little bit of caramelization in the bottom of my pan, which I don't like, but it actually is kind of a good thing for our onions. So. I'm not gonna complain. I'm adding my butter in now. And I'll take a couple of teaspoons of the bacon fat. There's some also in the, in the pan that didn't wipe out, of course. So we won't be short on bacon fat. Oh, look at that, I didn't spill any. That is a miracle. Okay, got the butter melted down, and now I'm gonna add the onions, and these will cook for a long time. And I'm gonna get the other ingredients ready while it cooks. This was around a pound and a half of onion. And I'm gonna cook them by themselves, or I do need to add the salt. That helps them sweat down faster, and the garlic. I'll put garlic in too, but I'm going to let them cook down till they're nice and translucent. I'm going to put in three cloves of garlic. I better put my salt in also. I need a teaspoon of salt. This is a half teaspoon measure since I got bacon fat in the other one. And then three cloves of garlic. And remember, a clove is part of this, this is a head of garlic, so don't put three of these in. Or, they'd probably still be good, garlic is awesome. Well, we'll see if I can get them apart. Nice. Be nice, there's a nice small one, I'm gonna get another one since that one's so small. And you'll want to crush these. I'm going to crush them with my garlic press. See how that, uh, the bottom of the pan where it was a little bit browned, it's getting on the onions. It'll make them awesome. Everything's going to turn the same color by the end anyway, so. Okay. 
This takes a lot of stirring and attention, but that's kind of why I like it. You get to watch it develop instead of putting it in a crock pot and going to bingo. I just want you to know there's other ways to do it. So in case you don't like messing with it as long as I do, you can still get delicious bacon jam. But you're always gonna have to get your onions sweated down, so you're not gonna get out of that. And it takes average eight to 10 minutes to get your onions ready to add the other ingredients. Look at those. Ah, that caramelization looks awesome. In the bottom of the pan. Ooh, I did get some big chunks of onion too. I better smash them up. <laughs> One escaped. It's something about this being hard to reach stuff that makes it always jump out of the pan for me. Okay, I'm gonna turn it up a teens. And let's work on some of these other things we'll be putting in. I'm gonna chop up the bacon a little bit too, a little bit more. If it's warm and still a little bit warm, I'll get the other stuff first. Let me get a little prep bowl so I can put them in. We put in the teaspoon of salt already with our onions because it helps them out. And now I'm going to need a teaspoon of pepper also. So I got some coarse ground black pepper. And then a half a teaspoon of thyme. You can add more later if you feel like it's not enough. I think the original, one of the original recipes I tried had like a teaspoon and a half. And I just thought it kind of took over. So I cut it down quite a bit, but you can add more. And then a pinch of cayenne, I'm calling it a quarter teaspoon. Probably should be an eighth, but hey, I took some time out, so you gotta have something. And then the original recipe called for sherry vinegar. But that is really hard to find. So I'm gonna use half red wine vinegar and half just cooking sherry. Let that cool a little bit. These are the awesome knives at Aunt Faye's. Okay, quarter cup. Since we need a quarter cup of sherry vinegar, like I said, I'm gonna do half of it in red wine vinegar. And half of it in cooking sherry. Because they're not exactly the same. That's my workaround. We'll also put a little bit of water in. Probably you'd, it's probably more exciting to use the coffee or the whiskey. But this is the one I fell in love with, so this is what I'm doing. The recipes also varied how much water. Some of them had like a cup and a half. This one's got a half a cup. Did I say a quarter cup? I mean a half a cup. You'll know when you need it because it'll start to get pretty dried out. And this doesn't have to be a uniform size. I just want it a little bit smaller so it's easier to spread. 
And if you got it cooked down enough, you should be able to crack it. It should crack in half. Well, when I watch people do it on TV, they sure make it look a lot easier. <laughs> okay, these are almost translucent. Let me check my ingredients one more time. Why don't I take a really short break so these can get cooked down as much as they need. I won't be gone for long because it's almost ready to put the rest of the stuff in. But let's take a short break to let these get translucent and when we come back we'll add everything else. Make a difficult choice an easy one with Cedar View Assisted Living's knowledgeable and caring staff. Your loved one will be professionally taken care of as they transition into their new community. With movies, holiday parties, planned exercises and games, residents will have opportunities every day to enjoy their time at Cedar View. Multiple room styles are available, ensuring a just right fit for your loved one. Come see Cedar View Assisted Living for yourself next to Sternberg Museum. The care you need, the home you want. Your home's exterior is the best defense against harsh weather conditions. With insulated vinyl siding, energy efficient windows, spray foam insulation, and metal roofing from AquaShield Roofing and Construction, you can protect your home from howling winds and ice cold temperatures. Don't let Mother Nature interfere with the comfort of your home. Call or visit us online today for a free estimate. AquaShield Roofing and Construction, our team is dedicated to your complete satisfaction. Hey, welcome back. We're getting ready to add the rest of our ingredients. And I slipped a bite of our bacon and it is awesome. I have to tell you, Farmland, I, I don't know why it tastes the best. But I just put in a half cup of brown sugar. And I'm gonna put all the bacon in that I chopped. And our goal is to get this all about the same color. It should be pretty uniformly I mean, you'll be able to tell there's different things in it, but it should be uniformly browned by the end. So it will take a while to cook it down. You might want to opt for the, for the method that uses the crock pot if you get tired, but this one will get you eating faster if you can handle all the stirring. Okay. I've just added the bacon, the brown sugar. Here is my quarter cup of sherry vinegar, which we pretended to make out of sherry and red wine vinegar. These are the spices I measured earlier. It was a teaspoon of pepper, half teaspoon of thyme, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. Mm, it's starting to smell elevated. So the thyme and at the end we'll put in some balsamic and I feel like those are the things that elevate it above just a nice salty sweet snack. Make it taste kind of more like a chef snack. I need about a half a cup of water. I think I'll wait to put it in until it looks like it needs it. But I'm going to have it ready so that I do not forget. See, it's still got plenty of liquid right now. Okay, after this cooks down, we're gonna take it off of the heat and put in a couple of teaspoons, maybe tablespoons of balsamic, and just a little bit, maybe two tablespoons of olive oil, just to give it a little shine. But we need to get it all one color first. And we'll have to add the half cup water at some point. This will take a while, so if you want to take a break, go get yourself a pop. Maybe get the whiskey that I should have put in here, and when you come back, it'll be all the same color. Coming home for the holidays is special. Seeing loved ones, spending time with family and friends makes memories that last a lifetime. And we know some can't be home for the holidays. 
so we're helping you make this holiday season extra special. Give the ones you love the gift that helps you stay in touch all year round. If you activate a new smartphone with Next Tech Wireless, we'll gift you free service until 2018. With Next Tech Wireless, you're never far from home. Norton County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Greg Serene to the community. Dr. Serene is a board certified surgeon and trained in sports medicine. His practice will focus on knee injuries, joint replacements, and general orthopedics. Dr. Serene has been practicing for over 20 years and looks forward to providing orthopedic care to Norton and the surrounding communities. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. Welcome back to Local Flavor. We've got this cooked down about as much as we need it to look. And I'm ready to add my balsamic and the olive oil. I'm crazy about balsamic. Yum. Oops, that was a little more than two tablespoons. <laughs> that lid is a mess. It's like made of foil. And just the olive oil is just to have it keep its shine. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil and we are done. We need to let it get down to room temp to taste it or to serve it. I'm going to taste it as it is hot. But once it gets down to room temp and gets a little less hot, I'm going to put it in little jars like this. And I made, um, they're going to be presents from my little dogs. So I made little things that say, good girl bacon jam with the picture of my little dogs on it. And this is some that I made already, and it has been in the fridge. So you can see right here that it doesn't, the, the olive oil helps keep it from looking like it's all congelled. And also, we didn't use a ton of bacon fat, so that helps too. But I'm just going to put it in little jars, and my dogs will hand them out for, Hall for Christmas because they always get like a toy or treats from everybody, so they like to give back too. Actually, they'd probably rather eat the bacon, but they're going to share. <laughs> and you can keep this in the fridge. Um, some people say a week. I've seen up to a month. I know some people can it because it's for sale in stores, but um, there's no guidelines for canning it. So I'm going to keep them refrigerated and let everyone know to finish them within a week or two. Shouldn't be a problem because bacon jam tastes delicious and you will want to put it on everything. We're just going to try it on a cracker today and I want to try the hot stuff. It's actually to me the very best when it's when it's warm but it is supposed to be served at room temp. So mm. I love how that balsamic just elevates it so much and I like the amount of time in this one too. Um, thank you for joining us on Local Flavor. You can't wait to try this, I'm telling you. We'll see you next time back at Aunt Faye's Community Kitchen. <laughs>